Hello everyone, this is Michael Torallo, Pre-Sales Director with Pentaho Corporation, and I'm continuing the tutorial series with Part 3. Uh, here what we're going to do is have uh, about a 15 minute video that will go through prototyping some data against the connections that we configured in the last tutorial. So before we get started with the actual prototyping of the data using the Pentaho User Console, I just want to iterate over a couple of tasks such as starting the servers inside uh, a Windows environment and also in the Linux environment. So what I have prepared here is a couple of VMware images and uh, sessions that go through starting the services. So after you go through the installation process uh, on a Linux system or on a Windows system, there's an automatic startup procedure that asks you if you'd want to start the Enterprise Console, start the BI server, and basically brings up the browser windows for both of those. Well, after you've used the software for a while or possibly shut down the browsers, you want to get back to that. Um, so, Or if the system you're using is experimental and you shut it down and you might not be familiar with how to start that, I'm going to step you through that right here. So on a Linux installation where you've installed the software, there is the directory structure, will perform a listing, and there's a script called ctlscript.sh. That's basically a control script that is included with the installer suite that basically starts all of the services on a Linux environment. Uh, those services would be the default MySQL repository, the Tomcat web app server, and the enterprise console service. So simply we will type in dot slash ctlscript.sh and then start. If I don't type in a, a switch or an argument and press enter, you can see that we provide a usage. And then you could do an individual start and stop of the different components if you wanted to. So in this case, we'll just press and select start. And this will set up and start the MySQL database, the Tomcat Java application server, as well as the Enterprise Console. Uh, you'll notice the Enterprise Console is listed as what's called Jetty. Uh, Jetty is a lightweight Java app server that we use for the console. Keep in mind the console doesn't always have to be up and running. That's just for really configuration, maintenance, and monitoring. Okay, so those services have been started on the, the Windows box. What we're going to do next is just go over to a uh, VMware image for uh, Windows that I have prepared here. Let me send out the control alt delete. Okay, and on a Windows platform, what I want you to notice is there's a start, all programs, and a program group called Pentaho Enterprise Edition. Here there'll be a server management, and you can do start BI server, stop BI server, as well as start the data integration server if it's been installed and start the Enterprise Console. When you do start BI Server, what it's actually doing, it's running a script that actually starts the service in the Services Control Panel. So one of the things to keep note of here is that on a Windows installation with the installer, uh, we actually install services. So you have the Pentaho BI Server and the Pentaho Solution Repository. Uh, the solution repository is the MySQL version of the database, and you can see that through the path to executable. And the Pentaho BI server is the Tomcat installation that you see here. Okay, so that's what those scripts do. Now, also for starting the Enterprise Console on Windows, that does not run as a service. That's something you will have to start through the program group under the server management folder, and then start Enterprise Console, and that'll bring up a uh, command window such as this. So some of the common questions on Windows is, well, now I have to be logged in to keep this up and running. Keep in mind, you know, there are steps to keep make this run as a service, um, but for installation and valuation purposes, um, again, this service does not have to be left up and running uh, for the installation of Pentaho. Okay, so that's starting the services. Now that the services are started, what we're going to do is navigate over to a web browser. Okay, and in the web browser, what we're going to do is now type in the URL. Now, inside Windows, there's a shortcut to bring it up. It basically uses the host name and the port number. Inside the browser, what you're going to do here is just type in the host name 
and the port number. So when I installed Pentaho, it installed it on port 8081. Your ports may vary. It might be 8080, it could be 8082. It, what it does during the installation is look for any ports that aren't running. If 8080 is in use, then it'll go to the next one. So in this case, 8081, and that'll bring us to the login screen. So what you see here is actually a uh, remote web browser. This is my web browser on my host operating system accessing my Ubuntu VMware image. And same thing with the Enterprise Console. My Enterprise Console is running on 8089. Yours might be running on 8088. Um, just to reiterate, when setting up a remote installation where you have a remote BI server and then using your workstation to access it, always make sure that the configuration and the web settings that your host name is changed in base URL. By default, we use localhost. While we're in the administration console, we'll also verify those database connections. So in the part two of the tutorial, we set up a Oracle connection and a Microsoft SQL Server connection. And these were pointing to either a different SID or database connection. So what we're going to do next is we're going to log into the Pentaho user console and we're going to immediately start prototyping. And when I use the word prototyping, that means without using the desktop design tools, Pentaho has the analyzer report interface and also has the new dashboard interface. Uh, and then also the new report interface. The new report interface is the older web ad hoc query interface that was released into community. Uh, basically was more of a testbed for innovation for ad hoc query. The new analyzer report is the enterprise edition version of our web ad hoc query and analysis. And then the new dashboard is for the dashboard designer. The new report and the new dashboard utilize a, a metadata layer where you can create that metadata with our agile BI tools, which we'll talk about later in the series. Uh, a Penta or the Pentaho metadata editor, which again we'll talk later in the series. But if you wanted to immediately get started testing and prototyping data, um, you could do that by uploading a CSV file or issuing a SQL query. So I wanted to do that today to show you if you wanted to be able to show somebody how quickly you can get data out of a system and then visualize it with our dashboard designer or the ad hoc tool, you can do that. So what we're going to do here is go to my Oracle instance that I have prepared and we're going to type in my user credentials and the reason for this is just to show you that it is real and to show you the data that I'm accessing. So here we'll select our object browser and in the object browser we have a number of different tables. Here I have a table called comp, CINV, cord, and csale. This is kind of like a star schema, fact dimensional, has primary foreign key relationships. Um, I'm just going to access data from this particular ta table structure inside the user console. And to do that, we'll go back to the user console and let's start prototyping within the dashboard designer. So I select the dashboard designer and you can see we have a number of different panels. We can elaborate on the dashboard designer as we go through the series. Uh, keep in mind we add additional features and functions to the dashboard designer. Uh, we have some nice new features coming in um, within our September release or uh, maintenance update. Uh, in the current version we have the ability of selecting a predefined list of templates which you can make your own and allow as little as many as you like. As well as insert a chart, a data table, a link, or an object from the repository. So what we're going to start out with is just a simple chart and you'll see we have a dialog that says select data source. These are known as the Pentaho metadata models. Uh, these are created either with the Pentaho metadata editor or the modeling perspective that is in the new Pentaho data integration 4.0. And again we'll cover that later in the series so when you publish those models they will be available in this list. So these are the sample models that we provide, but what I'm going to do here is click on this plus symbol because admin roles have the ability to start prototyping by entering a SQL query or by selecting uh, or uploading a CSV file. So for this instance, what we're going to do is connect to the sales data that I have. I'll call it sales data SQL. And we're going to connect to the instance of Oracle. And what we're going to do is paste in uh, a SQL query that I have prepared. And to do that, I'm just going to navigate to where I have my SQL query and navigate to the user console and paste that in. 
Okay, so at this point, it's just straight SQL or dialect specific SQL for whatever database you're connecting to. So we're not creating any metadata models with Pentaho Metadata Editor. We're not doing anything with data integration or the report designer. We're just entering in a SQL query. So I can preview the data, and you can see the columns that come back. And then what we're able to do is apply this. And what it does is grab the column names and does a best guess profiling on the data type and provide you with a sample, an aggregation, display name, and the data types. So for region, we'll leave it alone. For sales rep, we can make it, you know, sales rep, just make it a little bit more aesthetic if you'd like. I'm not going to go through all of this because it's a little self-explanatory. But what we also want to do is verify the data types and also verify the numerics. Okay, so terminology such as dimensions, the who, the what, the where, the when, these are your dimensional textual component. And then you have your metrics or measures, which are the numerical component. So line price, we'll call that sales. Uh, line cogs, we'll call that costs. And we also have quantity. You can see these are numerics. And then what we're going to want to do is aggregate this information. So here we can choose how we want to have it aggregated. So we could have none if we want full detail, or we can do some average, min, and max, or if we're looking at textual component, we could do count, count to stink. And then we could also set up a default. So by default, I want to aggregate this always, so let's select sum. And we're going to do the same with cost. And the same for quantity. Okay, so when I use the word prototyping again, it means that you shouldn't really be using this in production. It's a good way to lay out what you're going to want within production in a metadata model to be used by the business users. But again, if you do want to provide somebody the ability to you know, quickly analyze data, you can use this particular tool for that. Okay, so we have that selected. Click OK. And what this is actually doing under the covers is using Pentaho's technology. Um, which is actually part of the foundation for our new Agile be, uh, initiative that is dynamically creating the metadata model. So under the covers, it wrote somewhere in an in internal structure a metadata model uh, following CWM, the Common Warehouse Meta Model Standard. So here you can see there's that metal model. So here now we're going to select that metadata model, and it's going to open up a utility that's embedded in the user console called the Query Editor. So the Query Editor now allows me to start selecting the information I want for this particular chart. So here I want to look at regional information and inside each region there is a plant and then maybe what I want to do is constrain this information down to a certain year and maybe I want to parameterize this with just a parameter so I, I encapsulate it with these curly braces and I provide a year value of 2010 and then I want to look at a particular metric maybe sales and make sure my aggregate is selected as sum. And at the same time, I might want to order it by sales, and we can order that by descending an aggregation of sum. We can preview the result set, click close, and click OK. So what that does is now generates the query and the result columns to be used within the chart designer. Chart designer now has a number of charts. These are flash-based animated style charts uh, they are the ones that are the most common, commonly used for discerning information, uh, bars, lines, area, pi, and dial. This is not all the charts available in the Pentaho suite. Uh, we have a number of different visualizations, either in a component format for flash or image, some that are in the analyzer tool, and some that are in the report designer tool. Uh, in this case, this is part of the chart designer component that's embedded in the dashboard designer. So for simplicity's sake, so we'll take the bar chart, choose a color theme, then choose our series. I'll choose plant, meaning for each region that has a number of plants. So we're going to have different colors in the bars for the plants. Our category is region, and our value columns is going to be the sales metric. And then here you can see the chart is built and providing me the different information that's in there for that particular year. Uh, we could choose to scale the y-axis, provide a chart title, an x-axis title, which here I'll just call this regions, and a y-axis title, which we'll call sales uh, 10k scale. And then we could also rotate the, the, the uh, labels. So I click OK, and now I have my animated style chart. So that's pretty it, uh, pretty much it. 
uh, from data to dashboards in a matter of how many minutes have I been doing this? Not too long. We're almost at the 15 minute mark. Um, so if you want to make this go a little bit longer, we can. Um, so I'll finish this example up with maybe a data table. And what we'll do is use that same SQL query and this time we'll choose some of that information for the region and some additional metrics such as sales and cost and quantity and this time we'll take a product category as well and then we'll constrain this down to one of the conditions and we could use that same year parm that we used for the chart okay preview the data and click OK and now we have the data table. The other thing I want you to point out is you have your source here where you can dynamically now change this to any value that is available. So if I change this to 2009, it's now going to change the data for each of these to 2009. Now at the same time you might say, well I'd like to uh, provide a pull down menu for this. So what I'm going to do is go to the filter section, show filter toolbar, and then click on the symbol and then provide a prompt and what we'll do here is type in select a year and then we can provide a static list of values that are typed in uh, a SQL list of values or even from the metadata list of the values. So if I choose metadata list I can actually select from that derived query and I can grab the years from that query and provide that within the select columns and now it'll pull down all the years in that data. And then we can just bind the prompt to the filters that we applied in the query. And now I have synchronized panels that will update accordingly with the measures and the dimensions and the years that I select. Okay, so at the 17 minute mark, this completes with the prototyping of the data. Um, in the next series, what we'll do is we'll talk about the installation of the design tools and then starting to create content with the design tools and publish that within the Pentaho User Console as well. As always, thanks again for your time, and I hope to speak to you in person.